Hey guys, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. My name is Twitchy, and last time we spent the majority of our episode launching a science module into low Kerbin orbit to meet our original space stationers up there. And today we're going to send two prefab objects up to the orbit, Minmus and the Mun. This is all in aid of moving tourists around the Kerbal system are much easier. Once again, my name is Twitchy, and welcome to my final career. We start as always in the vehicle assembly building. We have two contracts. So a contract to put a new space station around the Mun and a new contract to put a space station around Minmus. I think we can use the same design for both and so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. We've got a science module in the middle because what's the point of science stations if not? And I feel a little bit sad about the fact that we don't have access to any of the decent sized RCS tanks. This is fine. I'm mostly, mostly gonna be making this a storage unit here. So I start figuring out what we're gonna do. I've got the storage for Kerbals down below, storage for science in the middle, and then we have an open utility bay, and I've put a fairing with a structural part in the middle there to be able to support some, some random radial equipment. We use structural fuselages of the 1.2 meter variety to make sure all the docking happens away from the living quarters. We of course don't want to be frying our kerbals with the engines. Oh, not that it actually matters, it's just done for a bit of story. And of course we put the 1 meter docking port down the end. I'm kind of feeling like the small docking ports are for my robot craft and the larger 1.2 meter ones are for manned vehicles. Having a think about what else we need to put onto this station now, and of course we need to get some some sort of communications array up top which we've managed to do there uh, I'm then thinking actually maybe we don't need this storage bay down below inside the fairing we've got this uh the structural part that can definitely take a whole bunch of things and that's the only thing I really need to put on there are things like batteries and maybe some sort of probe control we can definitely put it there I find a structural adapter to go on the bottom of the craft so that we can put another docking port down and make sense and then we start layering on batteries on the inside these space stations are gonna have to spend significant portions of their orbit in the shadow of their parent object whether that is Minmus or the Mun and so we need enough batteries power to be able to get us through that particular night time. I've noticed that we don't have a probe core on this craft so we're going to have to try and put it one in there just to get some sort of control. Uh, we can't always have Kerbals on board but we d can always have control. Make a nice little support frame with the struts uh, making some triangles. They're nice strong shapes in the face of all sorts of forces and make sure that I do indeed have the correct probe control on there that it can point towards the prograde and the retrograde. We give it a bit of a spin round, change the route to the, uh, to the the central part there to the probe core because we want to be able to and it's gone want to be able to control it from the probe core but the, it's just got it's up and just disappeared so I, I go to leave the VAB I even save generic station one as a different name and then realize that none of the buttons are working I can't leave I can't get out of the game I can't I can't press exit we can't leave the VAB They're just they, we're locked here we are absolutely locked here the only way to get out is unfortunately to press all f4 crash the game we are going to go through a quick loading screen and then find ourselves back in the VAB AB. Things are going to be a little bit different with this rebuild because I didn't quite remember exactly how it was done and also made some upgrades. It had failed to save so I replaced two of the structural fuselages with a making history it turns out part, the structural tube. I also replaced the fairing with the service bay which I've got to be honest I'm a little bit sad about. I wish I'd left it as the fairing as I used this in a way that I could have very easily done the fairing. There's a, a probe core in there, a bunch of batteries and I've also gone ahead and put a cargo container storage unit there so I can put things like struts and grounds science and I should have put some solar panels in there as well but it turned out I didn't for some reason and now we've got to think about how we're going to lift this thing not just to orbit but to orbit of the Mun and of Minmus. My standard approach when dealing with a vessel that is like a whole complete unit such as this station is to, to just try and attach some rockets to the outside. I like to go for a radial pair if possible that gives us quite a bit of stability but also enables us to not have like a, a super overkill rocket on there. If I went and copied this rocket out three or four times around it this could go literally anywhere in the system but in fact might be too much for the engines to lift off of Kerbin at that point I'm not entirely certain about that statement but uh it's one that I'd like to check out getting down and onto the launch pad it's floppy it's just 
too floppy to deal with. We, we need to go through and put down a bunch of struts, but that's easy. That's something we can do nice and quickly. Of course, now that I'm thinking about it, there are a bunch of other upgrades we need to make to this, the most pressing of which is almost definitely to put fins down the bottom. I was going to put them on the outside boosters, but of course, we're going to be throwing them away relatively quickly, and we still need that atmospheric stabilization. So I put them mostly on the inner core. We do have some for the outer boosters. I've noticed that the uh, the ambient light boost is a little bit glary, so I turn that down and we are away almost instantly. Going into sunrise, it's beautiful, it's one of the ways I like to launch. Of course, this means that you're going from darkness up into the light. If this was real life and we had this beautiful rocket plume behind us, there would be some beautiful atmospheric effects where the plume was being lit up, but the, uh, the rest of everything around us was not. Yeah, it would be uh, marvellous. As we hit our first coast phase of this particular launch, I'm going to take a moment just to note the ascent profile that we used here. We took off and immediately started turning over, trying to get ourselves down to about 45 degrees at 10 kilometers. We then flew at that trajectory until our Apple apps hit 75 kilometers. At that point, I cut my engines and we started coasting like we are now. Put a small deployment of solar panels out just to make sure that the probe core never runs out of power whilst we're up and around. And as we just hit Apple apps, I fire up all the engines and try and circularize our orbit, trying to keep it our orbits down nice and low. The lower we are to the top of Kerbin's atmosphere, the more Oberth effect we receive. This is just a small and very slight boost to the fuel efficiency when you are lower down in a gravity well. I'm not going to go through the mathematics of it. It's pretty complicated. Unlike this manoeuvre node I'm going to use here to get to the moon, we just put down a manoeuvre node about a quarter of our orbit before the moon. So we come back from where the moon is overhead and we just push up uh, the manoeuvre node to give us an Apple apps that touches the moon's orbit. There we find ourselves at an encounter and I just set up a second manoeuvre node inside the moon's sphere of influence to uh, capture. Setting up a few alarms here just to see how long it's going to take us to get over to that manoeuvre. It's not going to take too long so I feel like we're going to stick with this one. But remember, of course, we do have a second station to go up. So when I have done this maneuver that is going to begin our coast phase to the Mun, we are, of course, going to swap over to our other station. At this point, I'm realizing that maybe we could have put some lights on the station. It's rather dark on the dark side of any planet. Uh, crazy, right? We can't see the source of illumination and therefore nothing is being illuminated. Almost like there's some sort of pattern there or something. But we are getting around. We are 12 12 minutes away from our burn. I can see our maneuver node that we need. That's the blue circle up ahead. Uh, and for some reason, my craft just jumps to prograde. I have no idea why, but I'm uh, very happy to accept it because that was where I needed to be pointed. I, I don't know whether that's a persistent rotation mod problem or whether that is indeed a Kerbal problem. Uh, people in the chat were telling me that it's something they've experienced as well, but people use a lot of mods, so who knows which way around that is going. Our first burn handles incredibly well. You can see there that we've got a line going through the moon's sphere of influence, and we're going to call that one good. Whilst the moon station is making its way to the moon, we have a second launch to make, and this means, of course, we have a bunch of upgrades to do. We could not turn the station fast enough, so I've gone and put a bunch of SAS modules down, and I want to make sure that 4,600 is the Delta Vs that we need. We have 4,700, so this should be fine. I'm going to throw some RCS ports on there just in case. There will be a little bit of monopropellant fuel somewhere on here, but I'm trying to decide right now where I can put it with the minimal impact. I'm also wondering whether we we need to add some more fuel to these side boosters and I spend quite a lot of time talking the situation through with stream before I actually decide that as much as I do want to upgrade the outer boosters we're just going to go ahead and go with the design that we have here now the monoprop that we have access to is only these small little spherical tanks here and I suppose the best place to put them is on the inside of this cargo container of course if we attach them radially to the outside of the craft we'll be inducing all sorts of extra drag that we don't really need to impart to this we're already cutting the fuel budget quite far Fine. So I put them down in the payload container there. Add some lights so we can see in the dark. Turns out the addition of the lights was a fortuitous late moment addition as it is night time on the launch pad. But whilst we watch this space station put itself into low Kerbin orbit as we have witnessed before, I would like to take this moment right here to thank every single one of my patrons. Scrolling up the screen right now, you can see the list of the guys and girls that keep me focused and on track. When my friends come to me and go, Twitchy, are you sure you don't want to come on the next expedition to the Antarctic? Last time, while scuba diving underneath, we found a cave system 
one that went deep into the heart of that continent, but more confusing still. It looked like there was an artificial cave with man-made artifacts everywhere, despite the fact that the ice has been over the Antarctic Peninsula for millions of years now. And I'm gonna have to say no. My friends, I can't. I need to produce these videos, make these Kerbal Space Program entertainments for all the peoples on the internet, but more specifically for my beautiful and wonderful patrons that are providing me the money to sustain myself during these coming times. So I'm hoping you, dear viewer, will join me in thanking them from the very bottom of my heart, because I really do appreciate it a lot. The second station, Minook as we called it, is now in a parking orbit around Kerbin and we need to send it to Minmus. The problem is, every time that I set out a manoeuvre node to go there, the path that I would normally take has the moon in the way. I take the session of chat to go ahead and make it a moon flyby on my way to Minmus. I find a nice little setup like this. A radial burn is needed, but that is fine. The power of time warp gets us around the orbit pretty quickly and we're lined up for the maneuver node. I feel like everything's going to go well here with the nice little uh, double maneuver set up to go and capture round Minmus. So I go and perform the first one, get it as close as I can and then go and re reshuffle the second maneuver node because every time you form a one maneuver there is always a little bit of tolerance involved and so you have to check what the second maneuver node actually says. And this time we have a lot more trouble trying to actually rendezvous with Minmus. In fact, I can't seem to get it at all. I play around with the maneuver nodes inside the sphere of influence of the moon, I play around with it outside, I just kind of have a general scope around, but by the time I'm done I figure out that actually we're about half of Mimus's orbit out. I'm not sure how this ended up working out to this degree. Maybe, maybe the first rendezvous that it showed us on the map was for the second orbit round or something like that. I'm not entirely sure what has gone wrong here, but something has and it's most likely my fault. They say that time heals all wounds, and with the accelerating expansion of the universe that's going to rip everything apart into its constituent atoms, I think we can say that that is true of both the universe and Kerbal. We can just wait this out. We could have spent a whole bunch of fuel trying to uh, swing ourselves around, get a close dive to Kerbin, come back up, but we were practically doing that with our elliptical orbit anyway. So we're just going to take a little moment, set an alarm for a maneuver node in the future, do the same for the Munich system, because I'd forgot to do that, compare the times, and then sit inside of the spacecraft that is going to have its next encounter, and that is, of course, Monarch. The first space station that we sent up, we're going to take a little bit of time here to do a, a small bit of admin. I've realised that it still had the generic space station name, so we've changed it to Monarch Station and done a little bit of time just thinking about where we're going to fly. Looks like we're going to head right at the moon, so all we need to do is time accelerate our way. We watch the ball of rock spin past us, and when the camera angle changes, we know we have entered the moon's sphere of influence. Because I asked the Kerbal Alarm Clock to take us to the next manoeuvre node, we are actually set and ready to go in just a few seconds seconds. Uh, it's one of the features that I really do enjoy about the Kerbal Alarm Clock is you just press go and it takes you to the next maneuver. There's, you don't have to worry about going through spheres of influences or anything like that. It was a worry back in the day and no longer. Circularization around the moon has gone well. Well, capture has gone well. We've taken Dow Periaps down to the minimum we needed for the contract and then also made a Kerbal Alarm Clock for that. We need to make sure that we are balancing both these stations. M Minuk is the one with the lime, lemon and lime light. I was talking about my favourite sweets at the time, and so we ended up doing that colour scheme there. Uh, the other one is pure white. That's how you can tell them apart. This one coming down to Periaps, and this is the correction burn, supposedly putting us on to an encounter with Minmus. As you can now see with this one, it really didn't go as originally planned, but that's fine. We, we know how to rearrange our orbits. We can figure out how to get to Minmus. I'm just going to add a little bit of extra height onto my original orbit just so that we can have a crossing point of our orbits. That makes it much easier to try and arrange a rendezvous. I think technically it's an intercept when it's a planet. Uh, I don't know, if those of you that understand the lexicon a little bit better than me, please do let me know. I'm just pulling that out of my memory, a classically and stereotypically untrustworthy thing. Anyway, I have set up a manoeuvre node and I'm about to set up an alarm for a eye-watering 11 days in the future. I don't normally work to these timescales, but here, this is where we are. I would normally set off a whole bunch of other missions, and spoilers, I have put some other missions up, but I didn't want to confuse the, the video too much. So we're, we're here just watching these guys for now. 11 days doesn't seem like too much of the future to move into without doing a 
any missions. We are now back with Munnock around the Mun. Funnily enough, we've uh, got rid of our aerodynamic covering of our docking port because we just didn't need it, and obviously this seemed like the best place to leave it behind. We've done circularization burns before, and this one goes no different to any of the others. We are just trying to bring our Apple apps down below the height that the contract asked for. I believe it was 60 kilometers on both, and indeed we've got a green tick in the contract window up there. Now we just need to stay in orbit for at least two days. Thankfully, uh, the next thing that we're going to do isn't until 11 days in the future. So we're, we're going to pass this contract without even trying. In fact, I set a manual alarm two days into the future. Bam, we're here. We've completed our contract. And this really only leaves us one thing left to do as good stewards of the space time entrusted to us. We have some boosters around here. We could continue filling up the uh, Munula orbital space with junk, but no, we're going to deorbit these. If I had been thinking a little bit more, like I will be for the next set, I could have probably brought these back. They've got a, nearly a kilometer of delta V in them. I could have brought them back, lowered them down. They've, they've got parachutes on them. There's no reason they couldn't have landed. But anyway, we have performed a de-orbit burn. This guy's going to spin around for a bit, but never fear. I have a whole bunch of explosions for you. Obviously, what else are we going to do with them? We're going to crash them into the moon and cause some explosions. Yeah. But we can't spend all our time blowing up boosters on the surface of other planets else we'd run out of money very very quickly. We do have a few contracts that need to be met after all. We did one around the moon and we are coming in for our second one here. We've managed to intercept Minmus here and we're coming down for a very low periaps. A little bit of RCS maneuvering way out on the other side of the orbit. Managed to get my periaps right down below what the contract needed. That was 30 kilometers. And as we come down towards our periaps to try and circularize our orbit we can see Kerbin off in the distance there and the Mun of course we've just come from there we need to get down below 30 kilometers on both our Apple apps and Peri apps we've done that so now of course the only thing we need to do is the traditional two days awaiting though I want to explore a little bit of physics here surely if I spin and detach these stages we're going to smash them in to the solar panels well no of course because everything is still moving at the same speed as we separate the maneuver to get these guys back to Kerbin is the same for both boosters we're going to push our way outside of Minmus sphere of influence so we can get some sort of orbit around a Kerbin. I want to be able to do this because it's quite hard with Minmus's inclination to set up a good maneuver coming back. Outside I set up a maneuver and then perform that burn. As I'm trying to be quite precise and set up an aero break here I do it with quite a low amount of throttle one or two percent and of course watching very closely on my numbers to make sure we get somewhere around 24 kilometers above Kerbin surface. With both contracts in the bank and the money has been made not only have we actually made some money and completed some contracts but we've also set up the tourism infrastructure needed to be able to start doing the tourism contracts well and truly we can take on quite a few contracts and start shipping kerbals around to the various space stations out there performing excursionary landings bringing them back home and everything should work out well in the background here i am leaving you two visions of booster returns one of them ended up a much much lower than the other on the pair apps there blew up and uh, we're now watching a decoupler land in the other one managed a beautiful 24 kilometer periaps and then managed to not burn up and destroy itself in the background i hope to make this reusability and returnability a part of my technological portfolio moving forward here the problem is that i i discover these things and i forget about them very very quickly so i invite you dear viewer to come along to our tuesday streams tuesdays at six till eight i'm streaming live chatting to the people that come along and have a great time remind me the things that i need to do and of course laugh when i inevitably forget to do them anyway with that i am going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure ladies and gentlemen i will see you guys next time when we've got an, a bunch a whole bunch of interplanetary launches that have happened in the background whilst we've been doing this mission this was actually kind of filler mission in between all the planetary transfer windows we've got one going to moho juna and we tried to go to eve but i will see you then when we're gonna do that. Bye.